Hello and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm James Milan. I am here to talk about the Z zoning recodification that is in its final stages um, with Christian Klein. Christian is a town meeting member. He is also on the Zoning Board of Appeals and as such is the ZBA's representative on the um, <coughs> Zoning Recodification Working Group and is therefore should take his share of the credit uh, for uh, doing the prodigious amount of work that has gone into uh, drafting this new organization of the bylaws. So first of all, Christian, we're always appreciative of folks taking time out to join us and talk about what it is that you do and explain things for our audience. So appreciate your being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. We always like to start before we kind of delve into the, the, the details mm -hmm. um, here and just, just, just right into the weeds, I think. Um, uh, just get a sense of how is it that you find yourself in this position doing this particular work. We know that this town runs on volunteer energy in a big, big matter. way, and you're another example of that. Uh, so tell us a little bit, how is it that you got involved um, with the ZBA and, and in this particular sure. project? Um, so I'm a registered architect in Massachusetts, so I do building and development as a regular part of my work life and deal a lot with different zoning codes and different zoning jurisdictions around the state. And one of the things that has sort of, I've done some work here in town and it's, you know, their zoning bylaws are a little bit quirky compared to others. They're all quirky relative to each other. and. Um, it sort of came up initially um, that I was sort of thinking about zoning and there was, the town used to have a zoning bylaw review committee, which is a standing committee, and I had volunteered to be on this committee and was on it for two meetings before it dissolved <laughs> um, because the master plan was coming up. And so the master plan process occurred and now there's a new opportunity to look at the zoning again. Um, there were two committees that were basically represented out of that group. One was the, the my group, the Zoning Recodification Group, and the other is the Residential Study Group that was looking at more specific residentially oriented issues, um, looking specifically to make changes to the existing bylaws. And our group is coming at it more, not that we want to make any kind of changes, change any kind of outcomes of the zoning, but where we really want is a document that is clean and crisp and is ready then for the town to start considering where do we go next and what changes do we want to make. Yeah, and we understand that it has been already a, an extended and extensive process um, that you have been part of in doing this. And, uh, and also that it's clear, uh, especially to the folks who have been doing the work, such mm -hmm. as yourself, that the major goal here is to reorganize the document, not Absolutely. to uh, to re uh, contentize the document. There's no new content in there per se, mm -hmm. and um, and the substantive changes are minimal or 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 non-existent. Um, but instead, your efforts have been uh, geared towards making it a you know, it's an overused term, but mm -hmm. making it a more user-friendly experience for exactly. people to get the answers that they need. That's really where we're trying to go with this document. Um, you know, I sort of talked from the, from the ZBA perspective, what we really want to have happen is, you know, any project that comes before us today that's using the 1975 amended through today document, that whatever result they get, if they come in the fall with the new document, they will have the exact same experience and will have the exact same outcome. We really recodification should not be causing changes to the outcomes through zoning. And um, I, I promised you earlier and also our <coughs> audience that we will uh, actually be getting into the weeds, which we sure. will do shortly. Um, but uh, before that, I wanted just to ask you a little bit more about what your own particular, uh, you know, sphere was mm -hmm. in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, the recodification. I know that um, basically the committee needed to um, or the, the working group, excuse me, needed to divide uh, yep. the task. Um, oh, absolutely. Because there's no other way to do it, <laughs> right? Um, and um, 
My understanding is that you are in charge, we're in charge of the, uh, the changes to be made to the definition section. And I think it's important that people understand, um, certainly I do as a, as a former teacher who used uh, mm -hmm. a lot of books with glossaries in yes. them, um, that it is uh, just as important for anybody, any, any user needing to access this content, mm -hmm. that he or she be able to clearly uh, get a sense of what it is that they are looking at, reading, uh, and um, and especially what it is they're looking for, um, and that that is all contained within the definitions Absolutely. Um, subsection of the. Uh, I guess that it's separate from the bylaws, right? Because like a glossary of terms is separate in a sense. It, it's separate in a sense. Yeah, I mean it's because it's a legal document. The the definitions that we, the terms we use, the definitions have a lot of weight and they can be used in a lot of different ways. And so um, uh, myself and uh, Ralph Wilmer, who's another um, Arlington resident who has a background in planning as well, um, the two of us went through the entire definition section um, of the original document and one of the things we discovered is that there are a lot of definitions that are not in the definition section. Um, specifically we have our, our, um, our affordable housing has its own set of definitions um, and there were some definitions either sort of implicit or explicit in the uh, wetlands bylaw that we so we sort of decided that we would take all of those and bring them into the same location so that if you are you know, reading a section further in the book and you're looking for a definition, you know that the definitions are all in one place and you're not looking for a term, you can't find it here, and you're now looking for it somewhere else and hoping it's there. I'm curious about how it is that you and Ralph came to uh, have this particular responsibility. Uh, is this something that you were drawn to, that your, your hand immediately shot up? I think so. Um, I tend to sort of be a little bit nitpicky in terms of <laughs> proofreading, um, having a couple of kids go through the high school, one in, one in the high school at the moment. Um, so I like that part of the editing process and so it was, and it was something that I felt was manageable. Um, it's nice to be able to sort of look at the way the term is being, you know, what it says now and what the proposal is and does that make sense? Do we need to change the language? Should we revert back to what we're currently using? And to to use that as a way to go through it. Um, one of the things we were also trying very hard to do with the definitions is that it, the definition really should be what the term means but not how the term should be used and that that is more regulatory, that should be more in the body of the document. Um, sort of an example of that would be the definition for uh, gross floor area where I mean at a very basic level the gross floor area is the dimensions within the outside lines of the of the building but in when you actually get down to it there are certain things that are included there are certain things that are not included and so the definition that was in the current bylaw is you know a quarter of a page long because it has this whole list of inclusions and exclusions um, in the new that list is not there but it is in the regulations where we describe what how mm -hmm. you calculate gross floor area and so there are things like that that are done to try to take some, term, some of the regulatory out of the definitions and let the definitions just be definitions. And notwithstanding the fact that you clearly, uh, it, 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 again, it's abundantly clear that, that you were not about changing anything mm -hmm. substantive or policy oriented, et cetera, <clears throat> that is work for another day. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that in general, whenever uh, something is being even reorganized from when it was originally written 40 plus years before, mm -hmm. um, but particularly when it comes to defining terms, yeah. um, that there are going to be things that either perhaps are no longer relevant or obsolete, mm -hmm. or things that have come into existence in the interim um, that need to be defined. So how much of that, that kind of thing, again, being as scrupulous as you were mm -hmm. to keep things on an organizational level, how much did you find within the definition section that you really were needing to make space for some new kinds of terms, or mm -hmm. again, a limit, just eliminate uh, yeah. some things? Yeah, I mean, there are, definitely, there are definitely new terms. There are, and there are some old terms that have disappeared. Um, 
There were some interesting cases where we're not really sure why, but there was a separate definition for bed and breakfast and bed and breakfast home. The definitions were nearly identical in the way that they were applied and the bylaw was essentially identical. So we've pared that down so there's just bed and breakfast. There's a similar thing around catering that there was catering versus catering service, but they're sort of one in the same. Um, so those are sort of example of where there's you know, two definitions or something that got merged together. Um, the currently there was, there's a definition for a rehabilitation residence, which is a term that is not used by the state anymore. It's now a group home. And so essentially it's the same definition, but the term has changed, but the content is still uh, relatively identical. Mm -hmm. And then we have new terms that we have introduced because they occur elsewhere in the bylaw but have never really been defined. Um, the term deck has never been defined, but we talk about people having deck. A shed is not defined, but we talk about My sheds. My goodness, really, those seem... They're, I mean, they're fairly common terms, mm -hmm. and some of them are actually in the, the state building code, which is okay to use as a reference, but we felt it was sort of important to include them. So speaking of what we are doing this time yeah. around, let's actually sure. look at uh, the document and have you uh, guide us through, guide okay. us through, including uh, looking at the guide itself. So lo it looks like we are looking at the very first page of the definitions section. Yep. And on the left side, we have the current bylaws um, and on the right side, the proposed. And I have to tell you as somebody who's looking at this for very nearly the first mm -hmm. time, um, it's pretty clear uh, <laughs> that, uh, that changes in format and presentation, mm -hmm. um, including obviously the use of color, um, uh, are, are incorporated to make things easier to navigate. Absolutely. So the, so the first thing you'll, you'll notice, um, we do have each of the pages, we, we list you know, what section we're in, we have a page number, um, there's page numbers in the current document as well, um, but we do have this bar on the side. Everything that deals with sort of the basic provisions of what things are in the code and how the code is to operate, those are, have the yellow bar next to them, um, and they're up front, the sections on how the use and dimensional requirements and all those kinds of things have a blue bar next to them. Okay. So it helps, to, helps you to sort of figure out where you are Absolutely. Um, in the document. And the other thing that's fairly clear is, and here you can see we have a section that's shaded relative to the page. Um, there's definitions associated with affordable housing. I see, and that's coming right after adult uses, so it's affordable housing alphabetically yep. in place. Absolutely, and so one of the things we've, we've done is in the, the current bylaw, there are definitions that deal with similar things, but they, because of the alphabetical nature, they end up being in very different areas and it can be difficult to track and you're flipping back and forth. Um, one of them is the definition for if you, you know, a lot of Arlington has houses where there's two dwelling units together on the same property. If they're side by side, they're duplex. If they're one over the other, they are two family. But alphabetically, they're very disparate in the Right, they're, 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 they're treated the same, I assume, in many ways that people would care about. Absolutely. And, yet, and that they're very dispersed. But now what we have is we have a section where we are talking about definitions associated with dwelling. And so now a duplex dwelling and where's my two-family oh, two two family dwelling, dwelling. Mm -hmm. are now in the same page. So it's easier to go Along back and with forth. every other kind of dwelling that exactly. could be associated with. So we have our single family, two, three, multi. Um, we talk about a single room occupancy building, which there were three or four different definitions for sort of variations on a theme. And so those are now all um, encompassed in there. So we're hoping that this kind of a format makes it easier for people to follow through. If you're curious about definitions that deal with use, if you're looking for definitions that deal with building itself, you know, is it a basement, is it a cellar, those kinds of things, those are all now in their own separate little sections and those are all colored and they're all headed with the definitions associated with tags so you sort of know what the different things are. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas in the existing, uh, in, the, in the current bylaws, it's really just a strict al alphabetical 
uh, listing of terms. Yep, absolutely. And another thing you'll notice in the existing bylaw is that um, it includes directly under the, the term, if it was added or altered at town meeting, it includes the article and the, the year it occurred. It's a great way to keep track of sort of how Shame. things happened over time. Unfortunately, what happens is they tend to left indent beyond the terms and becomes in other sections, it becomes very difficult to tell, am I, you know, in what section am I in? Because I'm in section art 13. It's like, no, it was article 13. That's not the, you know, it's a, it gets kind yeah, of confusing. Yeah, I have to tell you, way. I went through that same process <laughs> in looking at this earlier today. And so that's information that we want to be able to maintain going forward. Um, and so that's one of the things that we're talking about, how we're, how we're going to incorporate that. Obviously, once we have the recodifi recodified version, it is clean, so nothing. Right, you're starting so we, at z date zero then. Exactly, and so one of the things that we'll be discussing, you know, after town meeting's action is, you know, how do we keep track of that information? Is it something that is in the print version? Is it something that possibly would be maintained in the online version, where you know, as soon as things become online, there's a lot of different options for how you can display text and hide text and have things still available and linked and things like that. So that's yeah, yeah. I definitely think uh, you know one of the one of the things even in the conversations I've been having about this process that ha hasn't come up that mm -hmm. um, that you and I were discussing just before we went on air uh, is the fact that you know a 1975 based document. Um, and then, of course, amended since then, et Absolutely. cetera, uh, is fundamentally different technologically and in terms of potential, you know, how you can, uh, how malleable that document can be going forward. Absolutely. Um, and I certainly think that, uh, that that is one of the few ways in which your work uh, is, you know, as, as, as extensive mm -hmm. and as labor intensive as, as it has been, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a little easier going forward from here. That's I a would great think. hope on our part that, that that will be the case and that, you know, when people are looking to, you know, are looking at the zoning bylaw and looking at situations in their neighborhoods and are saying, you know, I wish this was different, they can look in the zoning bylaw and figure out why it is the way it is and then move, you know, and be able to use that going forwards. Yeah, because I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I, I know something happened in, you know, April of, of 16 about this. Right. But I'd have to then go somewhere else to try and find out more about that, et cetera. Absolutely. I assume what we're talking about here is building into the future or even mm -hmm. in, in the document in its current form, you're going to be able to link to. It would be know, fabulous if we could do that. You know, whether, whether we're, yeah, we provide you know, at least the same amount of information or as you say, you know, it'd be great if you could click on something and go back and actually pull up what that article was. Mm -hmm. You know, Even maybe to deliberate. Who, who knows? Who, who knows? knows how far, how deep into the rabbit hole you could get well, that way? You know, we can link back to ACMI and we can go back to the discussions on on the floor. <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> how did that all happen? Um, but yeah, it does seem. It, it, it seems you know it, when you when we think about it this way again, mm -hmm. um, uh, the average Arlington resident's intersection with the zoning bylaws is going to be intermittent and mm -hmm. only on you know only every once in a while will they care a whole lot about right. it. But it, it, it does seem like uh, y your efforts will make it e easier for people to be uh, satisfied and, 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 and get the answers that they mm -hmm. want more quickly um, and, and with less hassle than they might have before. But also it, it seems a little exciting, I mm -hmm. have to say, to think about how this can live, right. um, breathe as Absolutely. a document going forward. Absolutely, and you know that sort of that next step is to you know be of what it becomes and how it's used and things like that. I mean, is really to a large extent is you know is up to the town and the the support that the town gives to that kind of a process. I mean, this we are a town that does a miraculous amount of work with a limited amount of funds, and uh, through the through a lot of volunteers. I mean, this. I'm astounded by some of the time that some of the members of this committee put in on the on this kind of a thing, and to to put forward the the body of work that we're trying to put forward, it's really 
you know, it's a, it's a great testament to, to many people mm -hmm. um, coming together and, you know, hopefully going forward we're able to have that kind of support to, to bring this document is to, you know, something that, you know, can be, can live on the web in a way that is, is helpful and we'll sort of see where that goes. Yeah. You know, again, talking to you as in talking to other members of the working group and the committee in general, um, what's clear is that uh, you're looking for public input um, sincerely and genuinely and mm -hmm. not, uh, from what I can tell, um, at all um, from a defensive posture, but rather mm -hmm. really actively, eagerly soliciting mm -hmm. that input yeah. because the reaction on your end is going to be a lot more, hmm, I had, you know, yeah, that's something we hadn't thought of, or that's an inadvertent consequence that we hadn't foreseen, or something Absolutely. like that. And Absolutely. all of that is going to, in the end, make the, the, the final document better Absolutely. for everybody. And that does seem that the, strongly the impression I have that is the attitude of the committee, even though you have put in a lot of work <laughs> when other people who might be criticizing, oh, absolutely. you know, uh, worked. Um, I mean, but that's the, I mean, that's the nature of, of public policy. You know, we're, you know, we're, we don't come at this with a particular agenda. I mean, I am a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals and I am an architect. I mean, I have certain things that I would like to see certain ways, but, it's really our job as members of the recodification group to stand by what our mission is. And our, our mission is not to go out and to say, hey, there's this little piece about you know, the, the, this definition or that definition that I really want to change because I think it would have a good, big impact. We absolutely, we, those are hands off. We don't touch those. Um, and where you know, there has been some, you know, we have a, we've been working with a consultant they have made some proposals and language and you know they're like oh this is sort of this little innocuous thing and you know we hear back from the public that no that's not a little innocuous thing it could mean this it could mean that and you know we've gone back and said yeah you know you're right let's go back we'll go back to the original language we'll leave it as it is and come back to it at another time and so it's a it's an iterative process I, it you know the but sometimes it's you know gets a little rough and tumble in some of the comments and the way they they come through but I think in the end, everybody is trying to make sure that we get the, the best outcome for Arlington. And that's you know, the bottom line. That's really what this is about is you know, this is our community. We like it. We like certain aspects of it. There are certain aspects of it we don't like. But you know, we do this as a town. We don't do this as individuals. With that, I will uh, let you get on your way. I'm sure right. you have other stuff to do with your day. I do appreciate, as we said, the time that you spent with us. My great pleasure. And the elucidation you left us with. And um, we will uh, be talking to you again at some point in the future, hopefully, to congratulate you on a job well done. I look forward to it. Thank you. Um, for Christian Klein, uh, I am James Milan. This has been Talk of the Town. Hope you've enjoyed it and gotten something from it. We'll see you again soon. Thanks.